On the odd occasion, particularly for those in A and E, unfortunately, you will experience hostility and conflict that goes to the next level. You can have physical attacks. And for many of us, we've been exposed to that in multiple times around our careers. It's never pleasant. It's <coughs> obviously something that can be dangerous. And it's something that we have to work out ways of working with that. And so when I talk about protective body language, there's a few different ways that we can do that. So the first thing we need to sort of think about is protecting ourselves. So what do we teach when we look at um, basic life support? We talk about the first thing is danger. What's the danger to us? If someone's electrocuted, what's the first thing that we talk about? What's the danger to me going to help that person if they're still alive? In terms of weird, uh, so we've got to think about ourselves. What's our own safety? So if we're going to go into a potentially difficult situation where there's conflict and hostility and potentially violence, we need to think about how we protect ourselves. Because if we don't protect ourselves, then how do we help? Okay. Thinking about our own self-protection. In a situation, if for whatever reason it does get out of control, and particularly if that's not AD where you've got patients who are affected by drugs and, and other substances, where you can't reason with them, you can't rationalise with them, they're not going to listen to what you say, they're just going to go completely off. So how are you going to protect yourself in that situation? Sometimes we can call security and have someone there to help us. Sometimes we don't have the luxury of that. Sometimes we don't have the luxury of time to get someone there. Or sometimes we've got patients going off all over the place and we don't have the resources. So you've got to think about how you protect yourself first because sometimes we're not going to have that support that we need. Obviously, open communication. When I talk about body language, if I walk into a patient and stand there over their bed and start going, yeah, you've got a problem? What is it? <laughs> How's the patient going to respond in that situation? <laughs> Not so well. Whereas if I walk in there, pull up a chair, take myself down to the eye level of the patient and say, to them, look, can I help you with the girl said, yeah, there's an issue. How can I, can I help? Get them to start talking to you. The power of eye level is an amazing thing. And this is something if you haven't realised or you don't do it yourself, try it. Next time you have a conflict situation, just get yourself down to the same level as the person. You find instantly you start building that rapport. When you start building a rapport, they're going to start opening up to you. If you stand there, close posture, going, yeah, it's the problem. People aren't going to tell you what the is. They're going to see you for someone that's come in to solve the problem and then move on. They're not, they realise you're not there to actually help. So it's important that part of your body language. It's also good to maintain your options. So this means things like not backing yourself into a corner. And that's literally and figuratively. Don't tell a patient you're going to do something that you know you can't do. Don't promise something you can't do. At the same time, if there's a potential for a physical confrontation, make sure you've got something behind you that you can leave for. Make sure there's a door behind you. Make sure that if you have to, you can step out and close the door so you can get away from that situation. If you're standing in the corner and you've got a patient who's going off at you, where do you go when they start doing this at you? You're in the corner and you've got nowhere to go. It's very difficult for you and that's where self, that is a bit of harm can happen to you. So you've got to be really aware of that in terms of if I'm dealing with a patient who is unruly for whatever reason and there's a potential that it's going to go to a violence level, you've got to have an escape option. So just think about that in your self-awareness side of things. Where are you? 